Good morning and welcome to Thought for the Day on Wednesday. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for your love and grace to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you uh, that we uh, know you through him and that uh, he is indeed our cornerstone, uh, the one on whom we build our lives. So please, as we uh, think of his word this morning, would you be uh, building us up in our most holy faith for his great name's sake. Amen. We've reached chapter 4, so Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with you, Odia, and I plead with Syntyche, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, Help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Paul is coming towards the end of the uh, central section of his letter before some uh, sort of uh, closing comments and uh, um, greetings and all the rest of it. And so he's drawing together these themes of, of what it means to be uh, one in mind um, here, um, applying them quite minutely to these two ladies, Euodia and Syntyche. Um, you can imagine this being read out on Sunday morning um, at uh, the church in Philippi, and uh, these two ladies uh, potentially sitting there um, in uh, the church meeting, wherever that was held in um, uh, someone's house maybe, or something like that, maybe still at Lydia's house. And uh, you can imagine them squirming maybe. Uh, maybe Euodia was sat one side and Syntyche another with um, those uh, sort of friends um, about them, sort of slightly um, looking at each other out of the corner of their eye, uh, and suddenly they're addressed by name, by Paul, uh, through this letter um, as it's read out. And uh, yeah, you can just imagine the sort of church struggling not to uh, turn and look at them uh, as it's done so. Uh, but there's an important point here. It's not just um, some sort of little argument that uh, Paul is just trying to um, stamp out the flames of. Uh, no, there's a, there's a big issue at heart here, really, isn't there? Um, uh, picking up on earlier language, Paul um, pleads with them to be of the same mind in the Lord, um, to be agreeing um, in the Lord Jesus Christ, um, one in mind, one in spirit, united, um, that language that we saw uh, back earlier in the letter. Uh, and notice um, how that flows uh, from what Paul has been saying about the future. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, that includes Euodia and Syntyche. Um, he uh, continues to see them as sisters, those who had uh, contended at his side, who had um, worked alongside Paul in the past, uh, maybe when he first came to Philippi or at some other um, point. Um, they uh, served wholeheartedly uh, with him um, in the cause of the gospel, um, along with these other co-workers um, whose names are in the book of life. Um, it appears that Paul um, sees Euodia and Syntyche still um, as those um, with their names in the book of life. Um, but uh, at the moment, they're not acting uh, like it. They're forgetting where they're headed. Uh, and verse 1 is quite beautiful, isn't it? My brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Uh, what is the, the way in which they'll stand firm? Or well, presumably uh, what Paul has just been speaking of, um, uh, about uh, eagerly awaiting our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, from heaven, uh, who will one day transform our lowly bodies so that they'll be conformed to his glorious body. Uh, that is what it means to be um, the joy and crown uh, of Paul, uh, his sort of crowning glory on the day when the Lord Jesus returns, the Philippian church, um, the fruit of his labours, um, those who he cares for so dearly that they might continue the race that God would indeed bring to completion the work that he has started in them and that they would uh, work out their salvation in line with that looking forward um, to that glorious day themselves uh, and for one another that that is how they'd see one another how are Euodia and Syntyche are going to get over their argument their falling out their disputes uh, well it's by looking to the future by thinking one day um, we will be one another's joy and crown. We will be standing alongside one another in the presence of the Lord Jesus um, in glorified bodies. And we will have no reasons to be falling out. There will be no sin, no discord, no disunity, uh, nothing of that sort. 
Uh, if both our names are in the book of life, uh, then that is where we're headed. And so we need to start behaving in line with that now. That is uh, one of the, the best ways to uh, bring about unity, to remember where we're headed, to remember our future, uh, that we're not um, headed for destruction, uh, and therefore our behaviour now should not be destructive. But we are headed uh, for glory, uh, for being one uh, in heart and mind and soul and voice, uh, and therefore uh, we should seek to be united in the Lord Jesus Christ now. And that's what's going to help you, Adrian Sintiki. That's what's going to help the whole Philippian church, who it clearly wasn't just these two ladies. Um, they're uh, one example of it, but um, clearly Paul is addressing other aspects of division and disunity um, in the church. And it's almost like he says, come on, guys, you, you love me. You're united with me. You, you don't have any problem standing shoulder to shoulder with me. And your problem is standing shoulder to shoulder with one another. And sometimes that's the case, isn't it? Um, it? It's easier to love those a little further away from us, who we don't have to spend so much time with. Um, it's harder to love and, and care for and, and get on with um, and be united with those uh, with whom we spend a lot of time. Um, some of us have been finding that a bit with families, haven't we? Um, during lockdown, rubbing up against one another. It's harder um, to, to love one another and live out um, a united and harmonious life um, than maybe with those that we only see the other end of a Zoom call or something like that. Uh, well, this is the same in a church family um, as it is in a human family. Um, and uh, the best way, uh, or one of uh, the great ways in which we can foster this unity um, is to be future-focused people. So let me pray that for us now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the Lord Jesus uh, will return one day and uh, he will um, gather up all of us uh, whose names are in uh, the book of life to be with him, that he will transform these bodies to, to be like his glorious body. And he will uh, bring about a, a united um, people gathered around his throne. Heavenly Father, help us to remember that is where the universe is headed, that is where we are headed. And so to seek to live lives um, in the here and now, um, that live that out now, not uh, giving in to destructive, um, divisive and disunited um, patterns of behaviour, but working um, for all those things that foster uh, oneness of mind and spirit. We pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.